if you have a pulse, you probably enjoyed the game. Now, if you're a Vegas fan, you probably didn't enjoy the result. But let's be honest, this is the game this series needed. This is a game where both teams played... Okay, let's be honest. Martin Jones, the redemption story, right? Um, he needed this game. There is nobody in this series who's been more maligned than Martin Jones. Possibly the most maligned player in the playoffs. And yet, we have a tied series going to Game 7 in San Jose, boys and girls. And I tell you... This series is wacky and crazy, and I don't know what's going to happen in San Jose. Could Vegas win it? Yes. Could San Jose win it? Yes. We have two Game 7s coming up in this round, and, and I, I love Game 7s because they are so unpredictable. They are uh, an emotional event. The one thing I noticed with San Jose in this game, they're not biting anymore. So all the pushing and shoving and all the little stick work and all that, They've, they're staying away from it. So um, they're they're playing a finesse game. And it's a lot closer when they do that. When they get into that physical game and they get all the Golden Knights fired up, it, it really favors Vegas. Logan Couture scores from Timo Meyer with six seconds left in the first period. I just put the dash on the board for scoreless first. And then Couture scores. So hockey powers. Um, yeah, that was, that was a crazy goal at a really crazy time. And it, I thought, you know, that's a Vegas goal. That's where Vegas normally scores in these playoffs is with a few seconds left early in the game. The magic didn't seem to be there, but the shots are 10 to nine Vegas. San Jose had one, one power play, didn't score on it. Vegas didn't have any. So pretty clean game overall. The referees did let them play. There were little things that would have been penalties in the regular season that they let go of. But there was nothing I saw in this game that I said, that's egregious. They should have called that. Um, second period. Vegas ties it. Marcia So from Theodore and Carlson. And Vegas controlled this period. The only reason this game is tied after two periods is Martin Flippin Jones. 17-7 to are the shots for Vegas. 1-1. Entering the third period. In the third period, Vegas did absolutely everything. Oh, and in the second period, both teams had a power play and couldn't score. And that becomes a story. In the third period, no power plays for San Jose. Almost no puck handling for San Jose. Leaving Jones hung out to dry. And I'm getting angry at this point. I'm getting angry for Martin Jones because I know he won't be angry. He's too busy making all those saves. Vegas, it is a, 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 a shooting gallery against the San Jose netminder. And, and it looks like Vegas is going to win it. But the clock ticks down. You go into overtime. And uh, look, nine shots for Vegas in the first, 17 in the second, 17 in the third. Nine shots, or 10 shots for Vegas in the first, 17 in the second, and 17 in the third. For San Jose, they go from nine shots in the first to seven shots in the second to four in the third. So we're going into overtime, and all I can think is, well, if Jones loses this one in overtime, at least he had a good game. Uh, going into tonight's game, the narrative was Martin Jones has been pulled four out of eight games in Vegas. No matter what happens, Jones doesn't have to play in Vegas again for this season, right? Well, overtime, San Jose, I thought, played well in overtime. And, and the way that the, the, the narrative was going and the way the announcers were putting it, Vegas controlled the puck in, from the second period on. I agree that in the third period, Vegas outshot him. But I thought San Jose showed a lot of moxie in that period. And this is where, as the overtime rolls along, you see plays, and you go, you know what? That pass would have connected in the second period. You know what? That check, that would have been a little bit harder in the second period. Players start getting tired, and you start thinking, if we're going to a Game 7, they're going to be tired in that Game 7. And Colorado, sitting somewhere, eating popcorn and saying, yes, please, go to Game 7. Um, <clears throat> now... We get through that first overtime. This officially becomes the longest overtime game in the playoffs. And I know there's going to be people who say, well, it was boring. We should get rid of this extra overtimes thing. No. Hockey purists like myself will say no. Never, never, never. Uh, shots were 8-7 to seven for San Jose in that overtime. I thought San Jose played them pretty even. Um, there's a, a play where Colin Miller, Snow Angels, and kicks the puck off the line. And I thought San Jose had it. I 
I actually threw my arms in the air and said, how did that not go in the net? And uh, Colin Miller makes the save. So we go into double overtime. And the game is, has remarkably slowed to the pace where it normally does. And they've started talking about uh, the Easter Day Marathon from 1987 involving Pat LaFontaine scoring for the New York Islanders against the Washington Capitals. A game that I remember from 1987 as being my first experience with a marathon game, and I loved it. Even though the Capitals, the team I was cheering for, lost it, and I felt gutted for Bob Mason when he just he just standing there. I don't think he I st I don't think he's still seen the puck. But they start talking about it, and they they're talking about it because here we are. It's Easter, Happy Easter, and we're in a long game, and it feels like it could go on for a while. So again, we're getting the sloppy plays, but. Vegas in that second overtime, a lot of control. Then Barkley Goudreau gets a slashing penalty. And it's legit. It is, le it is a legit penalty. No argument with that whatsoever. So he gets a penalty at 10 minutes and 46 seconds of the second overtime. And I put on here tough call because that's tough. There was a lot of stuff they were letting go in overtime. That one I thought, I'm surprised they called it. I kind of understand why. But it didn't rob the team of a scoring play. See, normally in overtime, it's does it affect the score? If if it robs a team of a scoring play, if it leads to a scoring play, you got to call the penalty. This one did neither, so I was kind of surprised they called it. And then worst case scenario for San Jose, it's dry scrape time. So in overtimes, there is no TV timeout. There are no commercials during overtime games in the NHL. You get to overtime... It is, it is a constant 20-minute period like we used to play all the time before we had all those TV timeouts to worry about. Um, so the dry scrape means both teams get a nice long break, and it means the ice is going to be a little bit cleaner. Um, they were talking about how the ice in Vegas was really good for this game, despite the fact it was hot in Vegas compared especially to most North America. Um, it was a really good ice surface they had out there, nice smooth ice. Now, all I kept thinking was, okay, now they're going to have Pacioretty and Stone and everybody on the ice. And these guys are going to be rested. But San Jose's penalty killers are going to be rested as well. So maybe this will work out okay. And a power play in a double overtime, the players are more tired. But Martin Jones, at this point, facing a record number of shots, has never faced this many. And wow. So they drop the puck. Uh, San Jose gets gets control of the puck kind of quickly. And I'm not sure who blew their coverage here, but somebody in Vegas blew their coverage. And again, it's a double overtime thing. It can happen. Uh, Vlasic spots Hurdle. Hurdle, if we've rewind after game five, guaranteed in his own fancy way that San Jose was coming back for game seven. He makes good on that guarantee with a short-handed breakaway goal in double overtime. The assist from Vlasic and the bench empties out. Vegas crowd goes quiet. The San Jose Sharks go into Vegas and they win this one 2-1 to one in double overtime. And you know what's funny? You look at that score, you look at the overtime, and if you didn't watch this game, you go, man, I'm really glad I didn't watch that. That boring crap. 2-1 to one double overtime? No. Uh, even though it was 31 minutes and 17 seconds into overtime altogether, so uh, 11 minutes, 17 seconds into the second overtime, which means about 30 seconds after that power play started, <clears throat> a shorthanded goal by Hurdle. It's, there's a lot of movies in this. There's a lot of Hollywood endings to this. Um, this was a really, really good game. And it's a really good game for one guy's reason. Okay, two. Hurdle for the Hollywood ending. I'm guaranteeing we're coming back for Game 7 and he makes it happen with the overtime winner. And Martin Jones. Jones, who I have watched on uh, Vegas Golden Knight message boards as they they made fun of Jones being the starter in Game 6. Um, there was a lot of jokes made. And I get it. I do. Jones tonight came up with 58 saves on 59 shots. This game alone brings his save percentage right back up. This is the best game I've seen Jones play easily this season. It's not even close. Uh, Jones stood on his head, and what I liked was when Vegas Golden Knight players were kind of taking a jab at him, 
The defensemen for San Jose were making sure that didn't happen more than once. Um, clearing out that net when they had to and Jones had the puck. And this this was Jones's game. I'm not going to say it was a great defensive game by San Jose because it wasn't. You don't allow 59 shots and then talk about how great you played defensively. I will say Eric Carlson played over 40 minutes in this game. So there's been all these talks about Carlson's probably playing injured. He was in beast mode tonight. If there's an injury, then he took a bunch of painkillers and fought through it tonight. Uh, he played really well. And I was impressed as well by uh, a number of players. I have to say the one player in San Jose who's frustrating me is Jonas Donskoy. Um, falling back into your own zone and swishing at the puck and swishing it back towards your own net, I, I don't know. And then some of the shots he's taken. And, you know, Donskoy's a guy who a few years ago, uh, when San Jose went to the Stanley Cup final, I was really, you know, I, I really liked him, and I thought, you know, this guy's going to be going to be a lot of a lot of fun to watch. Not in these playoffs, he's been driving me insane. Um, and and on the Vegas side, that Pacioretty line, they're not on the board. They had a good night. They were close. Uh, there were a few opportunities there for Stone, for Pacioretty, for Stastny, definitely, and Jones just robs them. Uh, Mark Andre Fleury, twenty-seven saves on twenty-nine shots. Technically. The goal by Hurdle, you could you could look at that and go, well, he should have got that. It's double overtime. He had no, that was the first shot he faced in the second overtime period. Vegas had eight shots in the second overtime. This there is no reason San Jose wins this game other than Jones. Yes, Hurdle gets the shorthanded goal in double overtime to to drive this back to San Jose for Game Seven. I am so stoked for Game Seven. I love Game Sevens. Have I mentioned that? I think I have. Um, what a game by Jones, uh, and, and what a game by, by Hurdle when it mattered. Um, if it, but I will say this, if San Jose allows almost 60 shots and takes about 30 in the next game, I don't see them winning it. So, uh, take this win, this win that comes from a lot of hard work and a fantastic goaltending performance. And see what you can do with it in Game 7 for Vegas. Vegas can look at this and say, we almost got 60 shots. We don't have to change a thing. Jones can't do this to us uh, three games in a row. We had him down three games to one. We just have to go to San Jose and finish this. So for Vegas uh, and San Jose, this is going to go to the brink. I'm so glad this one went to overtime. Uh, and it was, it, was a relative, it was a pretty clean game. So for all the sniping back and forth between fans of one team and the other, I hope that a good game like this... Uh, brings everybody back together and all the sniping can stop. This was this was a, a fun game to watch. Uh, sometimes I have fun watching a game where I don't really have a team I'm cheering for in it. Uh, this was just great playoff hockey. And I'm, I'm just glad there's going to be a Game 7. I wanted to see more of it. As as the game went along, I thought, you know, I, I want I want to see this go to 7 just to see what might happen. And anything could happen. So this has been a great playoff season. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And for anybody who's going to say, Shannon, you got some hockey powers in the way you do your previews. I really don't. I I want to believe that I have some kind of a hockey power like other people think I do. I would use it for my own evil benefits. I don't, I don't have it. But thank you so much. Because remember, during the regular season, everybody told me to stop wearing their jerseys for previews or using their team in thumbnails because they would lose. And now here we are in the playoffs, and you're like, Shannon's wearing jerseys to make teams win. I, okay. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys got to see this game because it was bonkers, crazy, awesome. Um, I I really enjoyed watching this, and I'm really excited for Game 7, uh, which I, I guess will be on Tuesday, the same as uh, the Boston. Two Game 7s in the same night, I'm guessing. <sighs> yeah. Um... So there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you guys are browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And this is why overtime goes as long as it has to. Because, man, the endings are usually storybook. I'll talk to you again soon.